Today we're gonna talk gloves. All right, so the first pair that I always keep on me are nitro gloves. They're pretty much just latex gloves. Um, the reason for doing this is that when I'm working in a fine environment and I'm putting up a light fixture and you don't wanna get your fingerprints all over it anytime I'm in a really nice environment, fresh paint or anything like that, where I don't want them to have to repaint the wall or get any oils on it, I just use these. So this is for the nice kind of fine environments. All right, the next type of gloves that I use, there's two different uh, types, two different uses. These are cut resistant gloves, but they're also just disposable gloves. So I will get these uh, a lot of times just if I'm working in like a commercial kitchen and there's grease everywhere and it's just nasty and I know that after I use the gloves, I'm gonna throw them away. <laughs> I will use gloves like this. Now you don't have to, you can actually use these just over and over working out in the field, um, but you just gotta keep in mind the more that you use them, the more that they kind of get ripped up and messed up and mucky. So if I'm like, working out in the mud and I'm just getting filthy. These are the kinds that I want because I don't want to screw up any of my nicer gloves. These are rated as an A2 for their ANSI number. These are an A4. So cut gloves actually have multiple different ANSI numbers. You'll find cut gloves at an A1 through an A9. An A1 is like slightly resistant to cutting, uh, meaning like as you're wearing it, if you're like rubbing up against stuff back here, uh, it's gonna be resistant to cutting. The higher the number, like an A9, is gonna be really stout and really difficult to cut, uh, get your hands cut. And you got all these tendons and nerves and everything inside of your hands, so you wanna be careful when you're working around really sharp stuff. Which brings me to my next series of gloves. These are actually called electrician's gloves. Uh, Klein makes these. Klein is the sponsor of this. Yes, I'm marketing Klein materials and products to you right now, but honestly, it, it's because they're the best, so uh, that's why. So get over it. Uh, so these are electrician's gloves. Now what's cool about them is they're really, really stout. So they've got this reinforced padding. It's a little bit slippery. It's not like really, really grippy, which we'll get into. There's options that are more grippy. But I will use these when I'm working. If I'm pulling uh, Romex in a house, I don't want to get splinters inside of my hands. I've gotten, I've gotten like, splinters do you call them slivers or splinters leave the comment below when i was living in wisconsin we called them slivers and when i got down to texas they call them splinters anyways i would get them like under my fingernail <laughs> holy crap dude <laughs> that's the worst thing ever or you'll get like a long one that jams all the way down your finger and you gotta like pull this long thing oh anyways so electricians were always working in either metal environments with really like sharp metal um, or we're working in like wood structures, getting splinters, we're working, you know, cutting conduit, reaming things. So there's just a lot of reasons why you want a reinforced glove. And so the electrician gloves from Klein are really, really good gloves. And they're kind of like softer on the outside. So they're still good, you know, they're still gonna protect your hands, but most of the protection is on the inside of the hand because we're always pulling stuff and grabbing and gripping. Uh, the next series are actually called their wiring pulling gloves. So these are also an electrician's glove. It's just that they differ a little from this last pair in that the grip on these are like really grippy. So they're meant for pulling wire and making sure that you have a really good grip on stuff. Or if you have like a fish tape or something like that that you're pulling, fish tape's always sliding through your hand, right? Well, you can use something like this that's a lot more grippy. It still protects your hands, but it's meant specifically for grip. But essentially, very similar glove, just one of them is for wire pulling. Uh, one of them is for just general work. So I'll use these kind of generally more often than anything else. Um, just working, you know, doing anything. But if I'm wire pulling, I've used wire pulling gloves. The other two, these are just kind of like extra gloves really, uh, more of a preference thing. Some people really like leather, so I'm one of them. I like leather tool bags, tool belts, uh, leather gloves, because leather lasts a lot longer and it's a lot more stout and it's less likely that you're gonna mess it up. So I like leather. These have like reinforced kind of rubberized outsides. So they're not slippy. They're actually pretty grippy, but they protect your knuckles. So if you're like scraping up against stuff, you're not going to mess your knuckles up because they're reinforced with this stuff. Um, so these are really nice. I like the fit of them of all of these. They're all the same sizes. This, uh, this leather actually fits to my hand and conforms really well. I don't like gloves that extend like way back here and grab on. I like, you know, kind of short gloves that are close to the thumb. Um, so I really, really love these, these leather uh, gloves from Klein. Uh, the next one, 
is the Klein Extreme. Uh, these are meant for more like impacts on the front of your hand. So if you're dealing with something where there's a lot of impact, this has got some extra cushioning and padding on the inside of the glove. So just a good general use glove, but it does have a lot of protection around the knuckles. So you're not gonna be scuffing yourself up, hurting your knuckles, but you're also uh, gonna have protection on the insides of your hands, which a lot of these others don't, or they do, but it's not padded protection. It's just kind of grippy. So those are the Klein Extremes. Uh, and then the last pair, these are not Klein, these are Oberon. Uh, these are hot gloves. So if you're ever doing work live on live conductors, you're working on uh, service entrance conductors or anything like that, having a pair of hot gloves, if you're ever reaching into an enclosure working on stuff, it's a must. So um, every good pair of hot gloves actually has the rubber portion of the glove. Uh, this is rated at ASTM D, uh, D120. They are a thousand volt rated for AC, a hundred, a thousand volts. These are gloves that you want to get tested every six months and just make sure there's no piercings or pokes or any kind of damage because you could get electrocuted still if there's damage to these. Uh, and then the part that you put over the actual rubber glove is called a leather protector. So these are essentially just leather, you know, work leather gloves, um, but they come with them. They have their own uh, protection, but they're rated to protect the rubber uh, portion on the inside. So making sure that you have a pair of hot gloves is really, really important, especially if you're just like, you know, trying to like sit in a manhole and you're working on conductors. Uh, it's a really good idea uh, to wear hot gloves when you're working live. So that's pretty much it for my gloves. Lots of different options for different reasons. I seriously have, probably 10 times as many gloves. <laughs> uh, but I have multiple different pairs, right? And I have some pairs that are in my tools, some that are in my bag, some that are in my truck, some that are in my office, in my house. I've got gloves everywhere. Um, because I have messed these things up so much. I mean, I've got scars and cuts. I've got like weird deformities. Check this out, like my pinky, I have one pinky that's shorter than the other pinky because the tip of my pinky, <laughs> stupid. I was in second grade up in Wisconsin and uh, I was opening this bathroom door at school. I opened the door and it was like this big, huge steel door. And this kid just runs up, hoo, 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 being an idiot and boom, like Sparta kicks the door boom, right on my finger. The tip of my finger was just like hanging there. And I'm like, Aah! so I had to go to the hospital and get my the tip of my finger. Uh, we they had to like sew it and put some kind of metal fucking brace weird thing. And then I lost the brace after a couple of days. So my finger just grew all weird. So now I have one pinky that's shorter than the other pinky. And it's kind of crooked too. I don't know, it's kind of fangly. Anyways, yeah, I've, I'm a country boy, right? So like I've cut myself with knives. I've ripped stuff open on nails. Um, so keeping gloves on you is a really, really good idea. You can be super macho man and not wear them if you want to be, I get it. I'm from Texas, good old boy country shit. But if you're smart on a job site, bleeding all over people's walls, uh, cutting your hands up, you know, so you can't keep working and you have to go get stitches, like that's way stupider than just wearing gloves. So I recommend all of these various gloves for these various reasons. Now, before you leave, if you are interested in more uh, safety PPE type of stuff, we have a video right here that covers all kinds of cool uh, different PPE that you should know as an electrician. If you're more interested in boots specifically, I did an entire video right here uh, that just talks about all the different kinds of boots, steel toe, carbon toe, composite toe, things like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.